So we're going to be in uh, Romans chapter 5. We're going to start off in uh, verse 12. Romans 5 verse 12. I, I titled my message, Spiritual DNA. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you glory and honor this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. Well, Holy Spirit, I know that I need your help. Oh, Lord, you are the great preacher. You are the great teacher. Without you, Lord, we cannot understand the truth of your word. And so, Holy Spirit, we thank you that your presence is already in this place. But I'm asking specifically that you would do the ministry that only you can do, Lord God, and that you would reach in and that you would reveal to your people, Lord, the ministry of the Christ, the ministry of Jesus. And what he came to do, oh Lord God, let us see within these scriptures that we speak of this morning, Lord God, what Jesus has truly done for us and our walk in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, this morning, uh, just before we get started real quick, I had a dream. I was, I was awakened with a dream. And look, one of the things that I've learned about spiritual dreams, because I don't get a lot of spiritual dreams. We have some people in our church that get a lot of spiritual dreams. But one of the things that I've learned about spiritual dreams is that, number one, you remember it. <laughs> you know how sometimes you have a dream and you're like, I think such and such happened, but I'm not real sure. Well, I remember this dream. It woke me up. And uh, it wasn't real vivid, It wasn't, but, it, but there was some clarity to it. And I, I can't promise, Kathy, but I think that you were the other person that was in the room, all right? And this is the idea of the dream. The idea of the dream was is that, this is what was being said, and, and, and it was being spoken to me, whoever it was. And I think it was Kathy, but I didn't see your face. And I don't know why I think it was you, other than whenever I woke up, I thought about it. Okay. And I was in the room, and basically the person who I think was Kathy was saying, the reason you made it was because of the roots. She taught you about roots. She taught you how to understand roots and the roots that were planted in your, that became part of your walk is what helped you to make it. When you were going through things, without, basically the idea was without the roots, you wouldn't have made it. Because, you know, and then I started to think about it as soon as I woke up, because the storms of life came. You ever seen a storm in the midst of a hurricane? You ever seen pine trees in the midst of a hurricane and how they'll sway back and forth, back and forth? And without a deep, an intricate root system, that tree's coming down, my friend. And what the Holy Spirit was showing me through that dream is without the roots, you're not going to make it. Now, I'll never forget that in the first time I showed up in that church and that woman was preaching and she was talking about the blood, demonic spirits were trying to make me get up and get out. Because I didn't understand what she was even saying when she was talking about the blood. But thank God that she talked about the blood as much as she did talk about the blood. And thank God that even though I didn't have a clue of what she was saying when she first started talking about the blood. That in those early formative years, roots, seeds were, to, were, were being planted in her heart that were turning into roots. And that the roots were going down into the ground. Listen, I'm going to encourage you this morning. Because you might feel like you're that tree swaying in the wind. You might feel like the things that are going on in your life, the storms that you're facing, feel like you're, you just feel like you're about to snap in half. You feel like you're going to get uprooted. No, no, no. I want to encourage you to understand. Allow the root system of God to be planted on the inside of your heart. Amen. Let a foundation be planted in you. And I want to encourage you that if you will allow that to happen, you're going to make it through. Amen. Because, because it's the root system that's going to hold you when the persecution and the trials of life come your way. Amen. All right. So we're in the NASB version. We're going to start here with uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Again, I titled my message this morning, Spiritual DNA. It says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all Sin. Now, I got to tell you this morning when I call it spiritual DNA, I want you to know a concept that I'm focusing on about the sinful nature. I didn't want to just say sinful nature, though, because it's not just a message about sinful nature. Because, look, while you were born the first time and received the sinful nature, you've been born again and you've received it. You've re become a partaker of the divine nature. So I want to make that clear. But I want to hammer a couple of points home this morning. And that's a big one. Is I want you to understand your spiritual DNA. And I want you to understand the roots of these kinds of thinking. Right. So the word world right there. 
is cosmos. It's a, that's the Greek word for world, cosmos, where we get the word co cosmos, right? And it means an order or an arrangement. Now, we've been talking about some of these uh, truths in some of our recent Bible studies and some of our teachings about the physical world that we live in. Amen. That God created a physical realm for physical creatures to inhabit. Amen. Whenever God created, and, and listen, I, this started to become clear to me many years ago when I began to think about how God arranged and ordered the physical realm that he created. He had method to what he was doing. You understand that? And he had method because look, and I, I may not even say it exactly right right this second because I'm shooting from the hip, but the idea is, is that before he ever created animal life, he created plant life. Before he ever created plant life, he had water and he had sunlight because in order for plants to grow, you have to have photosynthesis. And in order for animals to live, you have to have vegetation. And that's the way that God created the heavens and the earth. And when he created it, he finally created man because his whole point to this earth is not the other way around. It's not, it's not, listen, there's, there's much confusion in the world today to where they want to make the earth God. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells us in Romans that they want to make the creation God. But in reality, no, the creator made the creation. And the reason that he made the creation was for Adam to have dominion and authority over the physical realm. Amen. And, and that's what is, but what it says right here though, is that through the one man, Adam, Sin entered into the world. And so it entered into the cosmos. It entered into the arrangement or the orderly arrangement that God had prepared for mankind. And so the arrangement was earthly or physical to inhabit the earthly man, Satan, a spiritual creation, who is the originator of sin. You do realize that God created everything that God created was good. God did not create sin. Satan had already sinned and brought sin into himself. Now, in order for him to be able to infiltrate the physical realm that was created by God and was good and had no sin in it, he had to figure out a way to take his, his fallen spirituality and to inject that into the new physical realm. And so that's what he did. He had to find an earthy or earthly vessel through which he could bring spiritual sin into a physical creation that had no sin. I hope that makes sense. It doesn't come from God, right? So the entry of sin affected the nature. It affected the nature. It affected the DNA at its core of the entirety of God's creation. Now, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but Adam's yielding or presenting himself to the submission or the service of Satan's wishes caused a change to everything. Yep. The sin shift, if we could call it that, resulted in death to the entirety of the creation. All creation groans <clears throat> or has an anxious longing. Can you put Romans chapter 8 up there? Romans, you can keep it in the NASB. All creation groans has an anxious longing awaiting the manifestation, or it could be said, the revealing of the sons of God. In Romans 8, 18, I want you to see this. I'm reading out of the NASB. I'm going to quote you a little bit out the King James too. But it says, for consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. You know what he's talking about right there, right? He's talking about the millennial reign of Christ. He's talking about whenever you and I transition over into eternity. He's saying you're going through some bad times. You're facing some trial and some tribulation. But the things that you're facing today, the sufferings that you're facing today, are not to be compared to the glory that one day you will be able to enter into. Amen? Amen? And he says, for the anxious longing of the creation. The King James says, the earnest expectation of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of man. The, the uh, sons of God. The, the King James says, waits eagerly or waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, let me just say this. I believe recently the Holy Spirit has shown me this scripture is both literal and prophetic. And what I mean by that is this. Prophetically speaking, 
the Holy Spirit, the, all of creation is longing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Meaning, the whole of creation is singing a song and waiting for you and I as the sons of God to come to the fullness and revelation of who we are in Christ and that we have authority to walk this walk out and that we can take the Jesus on the inside of us and release him into the atmosphere of where we go and that it's going to change and affect the creation that is around us. That's the prophetic aspect of what the Lord's showing me. He's wanting you to understand that born again in Christ, you, have, you are a new creation and that the kingdom of God lives on the inside of you. Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. I hope you do. I hope you understand that the kingdom of God, if you're born again this morning, the kingdom of God lives on the inside of you. And you can release that out in wherever you go. Whenever you start talking about Jesus, when you start witnessing the truth of the gospel, it will change the atmosphere of where you are. Amen. But there's a literal interpretation to this that's also coming. And, and, and the creation, I'm talking about, listen to me, I've been in the swamp before because my brother-in-law that I used to live with him was a crawfish. I was over there trying to bait his tracks. Keep up, boy, keep up, keep up. And then all of a sudden you hear a crab. He said, I'm going to turn this, eat your sandwich. And he'd turn off his boat, and we'd just be there. Every now and then you might hear a bird, and then all of a sudden you hear a splash in the water. <sighs> what was that? Oh, that was just a dead tree. Just a dead tree fell in the water. See, all around this world, trees are decaying. All around this world, there's a bird you might not have saw, but somewhere coming just now, and it just it gave up the breath, and it hit the ground. You might see it decaying later. See, because sin affected the entirety of the creation. And the entirety of the creation is groaning and it's longing anxiously for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes. And what I believe that is, is the fulfillment of, see, you've already received the down payment of the Holy Spirit when you got saved, but there's a full redemption coming <laughs> when you're going to receive your glory. And that's going to be a signal to creation that they're about to get Creation is about to receive its glory. Hallelujah. Instead of there being death, there's going to be life. So I want you to, I want you to see that this is what the fall of man that Satan did through a vessel known as Adam affected the entirety of God's creation. And it's very important that you understand that and that I understand that because it must, much of my message has to do with if we yield to the will of evil, we keep repeating what Adam has done. But if we yield to the will of the Lord, we now will be able to accomplish what God has called us to do to begin with. Amen. So in Romans chapter 5 verse 14, it says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So you didn't sin like Adam sinned, and I didn't sin like Adam sinned. What does that mean? Adam was the first sinner. You, you, I don't know about you, but when I, start, when I first started really thinking deeply about the scripture, I'm like, wait, hold on a second, Lord. I didn't do what Adam did. He's like, no, but you put your Andy in. What was it, Andy? I don't know. My people used to play Blu-ray and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and, and I'm talking about gambling. You know, all cards isn't of the devil, church. You can, you know, I'm, but, 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 but what I'm trying to talk about, you ain't going to be gambling and drinking Scotch whiskey until 3 o'clock in the morning. I want to make sure that we're clear on what I'm talking about, okay? All right. So, so what, what the Lord said, no, but you put your ante in the pot. What does that mean? Ante means before. Before you're going to play this game, you're going to put a little bit in the pot. You're going to put your dollar, you're going to put your $2 in the middle of the table. And even though you didn't sin like Adam, you put your ante into the pot. Listen to me, child of God. Yeah, it ain't like you innocent. You were born in sin from Adam, but you've already done your own sinning. Amen. But hallelujah, you've been born again. You've been born again in Christ. You get a fresh start. You get a new slate. Amen. And so even though you and I didn't sin in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come? Now let's talk about that a little bit. See, because again, Adam's sin resulted in bondage for all humans, even though all humans didn't commit the sin of Adam. Even still, the spiritual DNA has been changed. 
Because sin has entered the creation. The image has been changed. Adam was created in the image and likeness of, of God. Amen. He was created in the likeness of God. But Jesus, as God, was the image and likeness of God. And being born of a woman, he clothed himself in human flesh for the purpose that he could die to pay the wage of sin, which had corrupted the natural creation. First Adam, last Adam. First Adam created in the image and likeness of God, disobeyed and reproduced after his own kind, giving to his offspring a sinful nature. Jesus, the last Adam, came in the express image of the Father, Hebrews 1.3, and through new birth, he reproduces offspring after his kind. Amen. Look at verse 15 in Romans chapter 5. It says, but the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. So, so it's saying right here, it's saying that the transgression is not like the free gift. Okay? But the free gift is not like the transgression in this way. Okay, y'all ready? The free gift is not like the transgression in this way because it results in life instead of death. Make sense? Okay. But the free, but the free gift of Jesus is like the transgression in this way. You ready? I know the Bible didn't say that, but I'm telling you. What. The free gift of Jesus is like the transgression in this way because, see, the transgression brought sin and death to the human creation. And the free gift brings grace and life to all humans. So... Sin caused, sin caused death to the entirety of the creation. Grace brings life to the entirety of the creation. Grace brings the opportunity of life to the entirety of the creation because it's just waiting for someone to receive God's truth. Amen. By faith. All right. So look at verse 17. For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now look, right now I'm just talking about how sin entered into the earth, how sin affected the entirety of the creation. I haven't even gotten into how sin affected you specifically. I've mentioned sinful nature. But what I want you to know is this, is that that word reign right there, now I'm not going to spell it on the, on the wall, but it comes from the Greek word basileo, where we kind of get an English word basilica, which has to do with kingly power. It has to do with a kingdom and a king. Okay, and it talks about exercising kingly power to be able to reign. Amen. And, and listen, I thought this was interesting. I think I might write this word because this thing is interesting. See if I can remember how to write this right here. So this is, this is the word. It comes from this word. I, I think I'm spelling this right here because I'm, I got to double check with some of you people. I know y'all got your own little. Y'all got. Oh, I put the, see, you know, just to let you know, there's a little trick in the Greek. The second S in a word. See, this is an S, but the second S in a word isn't formed the same way. It's formed like this. Okay. So there you go. Basis. This is the word basis. Is where the word basilio comes from, which is where we get our English word basilica. And the idea is basis, and from that word comes another Greek word, bainyo, which means to walk. And so the idea is a foot or a foothold. So the foothold or the foundational level of the basileo, which is allowing the kingdom of darkness to enter into the earth, gained entry through the disobedience of the first man, Adam, and allowed the kingdom of darkness to come upon the face of the earth and allowed the ability for the foundation of darkness to begin to be built. All right? Now, now I want you to know that Whenever I do that teaching tonight, listen, some of you may not come to the second one, and it's okay. It's going to be a lot of information, but I'm putting it on video because this is the first time the Lord ever told me to put stuff like this on YouTube. And so that's what I'm doing. And if you don't make it to the second one, it's okay. I understand. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. 
But I'm going to do what I feel like the Lord told me to do. Because see, it's going to talk about the kingdom of darkness. And I need you to understand that it's at, because we are living in the midst of the kingdom of darkness is all around us. It's just that you and I are not supposed to still be operating and functioning in the kingdom of darkness. Because in your new birth in Christ, you've been translated out of the dominion of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. And he's the light and light that the father sent from heaven. And now that light has been planted on the inside of you. Yes. And so now, hallelujah, because I didn't even have this in my nose, but just as Adam's sin was a basis to allow the kingdom of darkness to grab a foothold and to begin to build its foundation, let me just say this, it started off in the garden as a serpent. It ends up in Revelation chapter 17 as a dragon. Right. All right. And so just as the Adam's disobedience allowed the entry of that foothold, then... Your willingness to receive Christ allowed the entry of the foothold of the kingdom of light to begin on the inside of your life. And the more you yield to the kingdom of light, the more the kingdom of light will begin to be built up in you, strengthening you, and giving you revelation. But every time you go over there and you visit the kingdom of darkness, you're allowing more of that, that bad medicine, if I can say it like that. You're allowing that bad medicine you know, okay, let me just say it like this. I don't know why, because I don't even know how to play these games. I'm not picking on nobody's games. I've picked on y'all's games enough. But I know enough about a game to know this. That sooner or later, if you're not doing real well, you start losing energy. And every now and then you come across something, and if you grab a hold of that thing, it gives you energy. Right? And that how you something like that in the game. Go over there, shoot off the screen, get some more ammo or something like that. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If you can't listen to the preacher preach, let me just say it like this. Every time you go over, over here to the left, to the kingdom of darkness, and you feed yourself with some kingdom of darkness stuff. What is that? You figure it out. I don't, the Holy Spirit's telling you right now as I'm talking the stuff that you do that you go back to that causes trouble in your life. Every time you come over here to the left and you put that stuff in you, you're losing energy. <laughs> You're losing power to win the game. <laughs> but every time you come over here and you submit yourself to the truth of the gospel, the Holy Spirit starts giving you a download of power from heaven to give you the strength and the energy that you need to finish the race. Not just to finish the race, but to win, to be a victor, to to you to bring glory to God because that is what he puts you on this earth to do. Yeah. To bring glory to God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. okay. Praise God. So it was a beginning point. It was a foothold. To allow sin to reign. I would ask you to carry your mic because, you know, it was talking about death versus life. And I asked Mike, I gave her the mic because, you know, me and lately, look, I just wanted to sing a couple of verses on that. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I'm also, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Just go ahead and, and just, you don't have to do the whole song, but, you know, just to be led by the Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You unravel me yes. with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy. Till all my fears are gone Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Hallelujah. Thank you Lord I'm no longer a slave to fear. Praise God. Sometimes they sing another verse. I'm no longer a slave to sin. They just throw that in there. I don't think the author wrote it like that. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 through 15 says this. Therefore says the children share in flesh and blood. He himself likewise partook of the same. That through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death. Death, that is the devil and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their life. You realize 
what the what the gospel of Jesus Christ can do to a person. Amen. <laughs> Come on, church. Yes. Listen to me. I know sometimes Pastor Matt, when he says something, he says it, it comes across the wrong way. I'm, 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 I'm preparing you. I'm not trying to say this the wrong way. This is completely out of love. We are some spoiled, rotten little brats in America. We are so spoiled in America. I'm telling you right now, we don't have a clue of what people in other countries are going through. We think we got it bad. We ain't got nothing bad. I'm telling you right now, you got clothes on your back, my friend. You got shoes on your feet. And listen, there are people that are living in fear under the tyranny of their governments. There are people in through the ages of human history that have lived under fear. There were crim when Christianity started, they began to kill and persecute Christians. And, and, and listen, they refused to change their story. Jesus on the inside, hallelujah, will take away the spirit of fear that makes you scared to die. And you, you and I, listen, we need, we need to get some of this stuff in us. Hallelujah. We need to get some of this in this church because I'm trying to tell you something. We don't know what tomorrow holds. <laughs> I'm not even talking about end time timing right now. I'm just talking about just because we're an American and don't mean this. I know y'all hear me say this a lot. But you know why I'm saying this? Because I feel like something bad's going to happen. Can I just say it on video? I'm going to say it. You may not agree with that. And, and, and I'll try not to say it every service if it makes you feel weird. Okay? But I'm trying to tell you that this is the way the church started. And I believe this is the way the church is going to end. Amen. It started under persecution under Rome. And I believe it's going to end under persecution. And, and, but this is the good news. The, the spirit of Christ. Gives us the ability not to fear yes. death. Yes. We don't have to fear death. He, he came to remove the fear. Yes. Amen. And so praise God for that. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yeah. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 21. It says. So that as sin reigned in death. Even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's kind of read that one again because, see, we're talking about reigning, right? We've established the kingdom concept. We've established the basilio word, the basilical word, the foundation of a kingdom because he wants to rule in king. So sin reigned in death. It's like sin was a king. You see that? Sin wants to be a king. Satan wants to be a king over your life. Satan wants to be a king in the earth. And so he uses sin, and when he can plant sin, now that he's planted sin inside of human beings, if he can get them to live in sin, he can reign in their lives as a king. Does that make sense? So sin reigned in death, even so, grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So just as sin wants to reign in death, grace wants to reign. See, instead of sin being the king in your life, God wants grace to be the king in your life. Hallelujah. Now, now, it's always important that we keep defining these words, and I didn't put it in my notes, so let me just tell it to you like this. And many of you are already aware, grace is not just God's forgiveness for something, or forgiveness in a place where, that you don't deserve. It is that. It, it, mercy, people have said mercy is you didn't get what you did deserve. Grace is you got what you didn't deserve, right? But grace is even more than that. If you look it up in the Greek dictionary, in the middle of the definition, it says this, that grace is a divine influence on the heart. Grace is a divine influence on the heart. Now, what is divine? Well, it don't come from me and it don't come from you, my friend. It don't come from this earth. It comes from somewhere else. It comes from the Lord. Grace is a divine influence on the heart. And it's reflection in the life. And it's reflection in the life. See, so when grace shows up, it works on your heart. What is your heart? It's part of your internal man. It's not talking about that muscle that pumps blood. It's, it's talking about part of your internal man. See, when grace shows up, it works on the inside of your heart. It does an inside job that becomes reflected in your life. See, most of the sin that people do a lot of times before the Lord really starts working in their life, they're doing it in the dark anyway. And they ain't never found out unless they get caught. Right? Sometimes people 
been living in sin in the dark and then they get free, hallelujah, and hopefully, hopefully by the grace of God, none of that stuff ever has to come out because it really don't need to be nobody else's business anyway. Really and truly, it needs to be between you and the Lord. Right. Amen. And that's really the way that the Lord, but, but every now and then certain types of sin are still manifest because we don't always do it in the dark. Sometimes the way we treat us. The way we the way we talk to others. Sometimes the words we speak. Sometimes just our actions. I mean, if you've been in the faith long enough, you can even watch people in the church and like, why is he, why are they over there talking to that person like that? See, they at least ask me, I'm like, all right, well, just let me be good. Let me not try to control everything. Why 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 is she talking to him for that wrong like that? What's maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing, but I, I, you know. But maybe, it, maybe. But but look. At the same time, the enemy is always behind the scenes. That's he's right. always trying to cause some kind of trouble. You know? Some kind of trouble. He's trying to inject his trouble in the midst of the situation. Does that make sense? All right. So so just as sin reigns in death, even so God wants grace to reign like a king in the midst of your life. Amen. He wants to reign as a king in your life. So this is really kind of like the rules of engagement, the engagement in the spiritual realm. See, on the battlefield of life, we need, we need to understand the gospel. We need to understand how sin works, what the cross accomplished in the spiritual realm. Because i got to tell you something, that a man can't just be a better man just because he wants to. That's right. You know, Nancy Reagan said, just do it. Or just don't do it. Whatever her story. I think Nike said don't do it. I think Nancy said don't do it. Don't do it. I don't know what she said. Well, it don't work that way. What she said? Just say no. Just say no. I really messed up. Just say no. It ain't that simple. No, it is. It is that simple once you understand who you are in Christ. It is that simple once you begin to operate in the dominion, power, and authority that you were given by God and grace becomes keen in your heart and in your life. Yes. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you become sensitive to his voice and he says, don't go there, don't do that. And then you're just like, okay, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> I'm just going to say no in this situation. I'm going to make a decision in the spirit and I'm going to say no. Can I tell you, listen, I know we're PG-13 but I know some of y'all ain't even 13 yet, so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just going to keep it PG-13. How's that sound? I'll keep it PG-11. You, you, you know, there's been times in my life after I gave my heart to the Lord that the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. Don't go. Now, early on, but there's even been times after. Lord, forgive me. I'm just being real with you. Okay. Some of my friends from Lafayette came in. Hey, they used to call me fat. <laughs> hey, fat. That was short for fat, not the river rat. Hey, fat, we're going to Homer. I wasn't even really fat. But that's what it was. We're going to Homer. You coming with us? I was living with my sister, going to church. The Lord was changing me. I repented of my sin. And the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. Don't, don't go. And, and so I'm like, even though the Holy Spirit is telling me that, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm getting in the car. I, I recommend that you do what I did. I hope you still love me when I'm done, but I ain't the only one up in this mug that's done this before. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. I'm going to get in the car and the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. So, like a little, like a horse with a carrot before the nose. I get in the car and I close the door and then we go. So anyway, after the first night, the next day we're watching the movie, we're about to do something. The guy said, dude, y'all got to bring me home. I'm not going to tell you all the stuff we did, but this is the point. We did some stuff that I hadn't been doing that I used to do, that they used to think I was a part of the life of the party. And I said, dude, y'all got to bring me home. I'm not the same as I used to be. What? Hallelujah. I got in the car with them and I drove. And on the way home, they were like, man, you remember, you remember that dude? You remember Matt? You remember Fat? <laughs> remember, how, remember how cool he was, dude? He was so fun, right? Remember we used to party? He was like, and I'm like, bro, y'all can do whatever y'all want. And after a little while, it started to get really weird. Y'all can say what you want. You can do what you want. And, and I messed it up. And, and I'm sorry that I did it. I'm sorry I'm asking y'all to bring me home early. But I'm telling you, I'm different. I'm not the same. And so y'all can just laugh all the way home while you want to. Just, just go ahead and y'all can clown me. It just ain't really nothing new. People clown each other. Just, just go ahead and get me home. Right. And, you know, and unfortunately, you know, the same thing happened when I went to Holland. The Holy Spirit told me I was in Holland. And I'm thinking to myself, 
man, I'm in another country. I have a camera. I don't do what these people do, but why would I want to sit in this room? I'll go somewhere else. Okay, listen, I'll go, they'll, they'll go where they're going, I'll go somewhere else, and I'll just take some pictures, then I'll get back on the bus with them, and we'll go back to the room later in the night. I don't have to go where they go. I got, but see, but see, the Holy Spirit knew in advance what the devil's plan was. I didn't know. Okay, because see, the God you serve can show you things in advance to prepare you if you and I are willing to listen to it. I got on the bus and the Holy Spirit distinctly said, get off the bus. So what is, what is not pastor, Matt, what does snubbing hand, oil field working Mac do? He sits down in the bus. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the bus rolls up to the side of the road. And it's in front of this kind of a joint. I'm just going to call it like that because I'm going to say what kind of joint it was. But use your imagination, adults. And it's the worst type of sin you could imagine. It's even worse than what they have in America. Okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, uh, is there not another place that we could go? Oh, no, this was set up by the tour thing. This is where you, and there's nothing else open right now. <laughs> Only bar rooms are open right now. Not just bar, but where they sell other things that are legal over there that weren't legal in the United States. And I can just tell you the same thing happened again. They thought I was the life of the party, but then the next day they're like, we're going back again. And there comes the conviction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you ain't going back with them. And you're going to humble yourself. And you're going to tell them that you failed. And, that you, and, and that's what I did. And they laugh, and they say, listen, y'all can laugh all you want. How sad is that? I think about that. What, 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 what kind of pastor would I be if I didn't try to admit that stuff to you? See, because you know what? We don't have to fail. I, I'm going to try to help somebody so you don't have to fail. But, but, but it's sad. Because, because I could have lived. Gee, even though they made, and, and listen, all the way on the plane over there, all the alcohol was free. They drank all the alcohol dry on the airplane, and all the Europeans thought they were so cool because they were some crazy Americans, and I was the only one that didn't drink. And then they laughed at me about that. They're like, you fool. You passed up all this, and you could have done it, and look, and look at you, then you fall back. I'm like, there, you can call me a fool all you want to. I ain't going back with you tonight. And, 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 and you just feel the weight. And, and, and I didn't even really know how to truly repent back then. And so I just sat there with that weight of condemnation just sitting on me. But I just thank God that I could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit enough to know that I wasn't just going to keep on doing what they were doing because it could have gotten a whole lot worse. Thank God that it didn't. Amen. What is my point? My point is we're talking about rules of engagement in the battlefield of life. And we're talking about we need to understand how sin works. We need to understand how the spiritual realm works. And we need to understand that we have authority, amen, to walk in kingdom authority, to walk in victory because of what Jesus did on the cross. And listen, this grace that wants to rule as king in your life, it's dispensed daily. It's even going to be dispensed by the minute. You know, I was thinking about this because I used to teach it this way. You ever seen a hand sanitizer? We got hand sanitizer all over the place now, right? And when you need to cleanse your hands from a hand sanitizer, what do you do? You go to the dispenser, right? But whatever is contained in there, let's just pretend that the hand sanitizer is grace. Somebody purchased that hand sanitizer, right? Somebody purchased it. See, Jesus purchased the grace when he went to the cross. Jesus died on the cross, purchased the grace, and now the grace is inside a dispenser. Well, well, who's the dispenser? The dispenser of grace is the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit dispenses grace into your life. But see, if you want some hand sanitizer on your hand, what do you got to do? You got to walk over there and you got to activate it. See, you activate the dispenser to put sanitizer in your hands so that you can cleanse your hands. And if you want grace in your life, through faith, you have to activate and you receive the Holy Spirit help that you need. Now listen, I'm not saying that you even always have to actively think this. But what I do want to interject right now is this, is the object of your faith. I want you to understand that your faith 
has to have an object in which to believe. What are you talking about? Jesus already died and purchased grace for you. Jesus already died and paid the penalty of your sin. The same way you received him, Colossians 2, 6 says, so shall you continue to walk in him. How did you receive him? Through faith in him and what he did. How do you continue to walk in him? Through faith in him and what he did. And when you keep your faith in what Christ has done, you receive a download of the Holy Spirit helping you, strengthening you, amen, and, and, and giving you the power that you need in order to live right for God. Now, you know, there's some other things you can do, church. You can spend time in prayer. You can spend time in worship. I, okay, I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but we can spend a little bit more time in prayer and watch a little bit less television. Oh, here's this preacher telling me not to watch my favorite show. That's not what I said. Watch what you want to watch. I am not your daddy. I'm trying to make a point. If we would spend a little less time playing video games and a little bit more time learning how to pray, a little less time watching Netflix and a little bit more time learning how to pray, a little less time playing Pedro, <laughs> whatever it is, and a little bit more time learning how to pray. A little less time drinking coffee with my girl if we're not talking about Jesus. And a little bit more time learning how to pray. You get what I'm trying to say? A little more time learning how to worship. A little bit more time learning how to do the things of God. That I'm around the Holy Spirit. You're not earning it. You're learning it. You're learning how to walk with God. You're learning how to interact with the Lord. Amen. Does that make sense? But the object of your faith is Jesus. Why? We're going to get to it. Here we go. Romans chapter um, 6, verse 5. Now we're transitioning. Because see, so, so listen. So sin entered the creation. And now sin wants to rule and reign as a king. Okay? In the creation. And, and in bringing death, destruction, and decay. And it's also entered into the human being. All right? And, and it wants to build a kingdom inside the human being. And it wants to rule and reign as a king inside the human being. But look at verse 5. It says, For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now look at that. So we've been united with him. Praise God. So the, the NASB says united. But the King James Version says planted. We've been planted together with him. Right? I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the words in the Greek right there. The, you know, I've told you before how, how words in the Greek have a prefix a lot of times. Y'all heard me talk about that? You know what a prefix is? That's a little word that comes before the word. Right? Well, if you break it down, the Greek word, the prefix for, for the word together is this word right here. Now... I don't know if you remember this or not, but this reminds me of this word right here in English. Synonym. I think I spelled that right. Huh? Synonym. Okay. And, and so the other word has to do, means sprout. So there's two words. This is the prefix, sin. And the other word literally means sprout. So this word in the Greek literally means together. So if you were going to do a very literal translation, together sprout. You're a together sprout with the Lord. So when you put faith in Christ, the Bible says in the King James Version, you were planted together with him. The NASB Version says you were united with him in the likeness of his death. When you put faith in Christ, whenever that was, I'm just here to tell you what happened in the spirit realm. I hope this is helping you. If it doesn't help you right now, if you'll think about it, if you'll go back and watch the video, if you'll read this chapter, if you'll take some notes and like chew on it, it will help you. If you've been looking for some freedom in your life and you can't seem to find it. Oh, preacher, I've been living for the Lord for 25 years and I'm still living in failure and I'm still, I got all these bad things. Okay, good then. Get back to the Word of God. Take yourself some notes. Get on your knees. Put your face in the carpet. Cry out to the Lord. I'm here to tell you the Word of God works. Said it right here. Sprouted together. United together in the likeness of his death. Your old man born of Adam that was born bound, born by bound by sin, born in trouble, born in chaos, 
has been planted together with Jesus and buried together with Jesus in the tomb. And hallelujah, a new man has been resurrected to newness of life. That's the beauty of water baptism. Water baptism is the external symbol of what's already happened spiritually. When you put faith in Christ, in God's mind, the old man died, he's been buried, and a new man resurrects to newness of life. When we put him in the water, we're telling the world, we put him to death. Yes. And we're going to start walking a new life. Amen? A together sprout. You know, I was thinking how the word united was used, and I was imagining the intertwining of a DNA helix. That's a lot of words, but you know what? The reality of it is the kids y'all learned about DNA already, right? Y'all seen DNA pictures before? How the little helix is twisted up together, right? And, and when a true conversion takes place, the believer becomes intertwined. It sprouts and he begins to grow in Christ. Oh, look at this. You may not like it, but I think it's... In Christ, we have become GMO. <laughs> We've become genetically modified. In Christ, we have become genetically modified. The first time we were born in Adam, we were born with a sinful nature. Now in Christ, we've become genetically modified in a good sense, genetically modified into his holiness. Do me a favor and put up 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll read verses 2 through 4. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Okay, I want you to see that word knowledge right there. You see it? Through the true knowledge of him. He, he said not through any kind of fake knowledge, but through the true knowledge and a deeper understanding of Christ. You know, I've heard people say before, man, if we just preach the simplicity of the gospel. I agree with that. Simplicity of the gospel will get people saved. But, you, but listen, if you're going to live for the Lord, you're going to have to go deeper into the word of God. You're going to have to, because I'm telling you right now, the devil has a plan for your life. And, and if you don't start to understand what the Word of God says about you and how to walk with Christ, well, why would it be in there if we weren't supposed to go deeper? Why, why? These are the letters written to the believers. These letters are written to the church. I personally believe God has called me to preach to the church. That's what I believe. I believe He's called you to preach to the world. Amen? Amen. I mean, I still preach to the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to get off on that testimony. I'll tell that next door when we get. But, he said, but look what he says, the true knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. So that by them, you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So I want you to think about that healing. You become a partaker of the divine nature. When you got saved, the Holy Spirit did a work in you. Now look, I, I, I didn't write it in here, I don't think, maybe I did. But look, I was imagining in my mind whenever I was reading earlier this morning that when you got saved in the mind of God, in the spirit realm, he, he I know I've said this before, but he rewound in 2,000 years and put you in Christ at the cross where you died with him and you've been buried in the tomb. And then now I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me, yeah, and while you were not there, I was doing some work. <laughs> I was intertwining. I was doing some spiritual work in you. And I was intertwining some new stuff in you. I was genetically modifying you. I was putting my Holy Spirit in you. I was making you a partaker of my divine nature. And then I flipped the switch. I turned one switch off. I turned another switch on. I turned the switch to sin, the sinful nature off. Hallelujah. And I turned it down. I didn't tell you that. He pulled the wire out. See, see, no, no, the sinful nature is still in there. It's just that the Lord turned the switch off. I'm trying to tell you what he did. And, and now it's your job to believe what I'm telling you. It's my job to believe what I'm telling you. I'm telling you in Christ, the Lord turned the sinful nature switch off. And you sure enough, right, it's too far for me to walk. You walk right over there and turn it back on. That's what you choose to do. Yeah. He turned the sinful nature switch off and he rerouted a new wire in there and he turned that on. And he now allowed you and I to become 
partakers of the divine nature. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old self is what the NASB says. The King James, I like that, says the old man. So he says the old self or the old man was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. So he uses the word old man, body of sin, words to describe. And there's a repeated occurrence within chapter 6 of Romans 13 times. I counted it according to the Young's literal translation, where the word sin is preceded, and I know many of you in our church already know this, but maybe somebody doesn't, is preceded by this right here, the, the sin. You know, in the English language, there's something called the definite article. What does that mean? It's describing a noun. What's the difference? Why, why is that important, preacher? Because, see, a noun describes a person, place, or thing. See, the word sin is being used in Romans 6, in a noun version. What it's talking about is the power of sin. It's talking about the kingly reign of sin. It's talking about the factory of sin. It's talking about that part of sin that allows power in the person's life to produce verbs of sin. See, many times in Christianity, we think all about the stuff that we do or that we're not supposed to do. But what I'm here to tell you is this, and that if we'll understand that at the core of what Jesus did is he turned off one switch and he turned off another switch. And if we will learn that and begin to believe that, we can begin to walk in victory. And it's not you doing it, it's the Holy Spirit doing it in you as you place faith in Christ and you receive your dispensing of grace from the Holy Spirit. It's the grace of God producing a divine influence on the heart that will now be reflected in your life. Not only do you not have to go down to the what's the name of that street? I can't remember the name of that street in Amelia. Somebody told me the name of the street. Friendship Valley. Huh? Friendship Valley. You ain't got to go to Friendship Valley no more. If you don't know what that is, you don't need it. <laughs> you ain't got to go to Friendship Valley no more, my friend. But you also can love your brother. That's right. You also can love your sister. You also don't have to gossip. You don't have to slander. All right. You get the point. Adam allowing sin into the natural creation allowed sin into our being. And just as but, but united or planted together in Christ, we've been resurrected with him. Amen. And we've received a new DNA. All right. Look at verse 7. Romans 6, 7. For he who has died is free from sin. Praise God. Okay. Our old man, our association with Adam, dies with Jesus. Now being dead to the first birth, we've been freed from that connection that we had with Adam. Amen? You got that point, right? Okay, preacher, we get it. All right, good. Now we can transition a little bit. So the next question is two questions for your list. Number one, did you know that? Oh, that's not what I just said. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Did you know that? Did I know what? Did I know that you don't have to be a slave to sin? <laughs> Did you know that Jesus already died to set you free from the bondage of sin? Did you know that if you will believe that, that you will experience it? So it's not just a head knowledge, it becomes a true manifestation in your life. To where if you're addicted to looking at things you're not supposed to look at, you don't have to look at it anymore. If you're addicted to anything, you don't have to be addicted to it anymore. If you can't help your tongue and every single time you get into a situation, you find yourself talking bad about somebody and later you feel bad about it, you don't have to do that anymore. Because the Word of God says that you are a new creation. That's right. So number one, did you know that? Number two, do you believe that? So if you know it and you believe it, well, let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse 3, because this is what it says right here. It says, do you not know? That all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. So, so did you not know? The idea is were you ignorant of this information that I'm about to tell you? And while most people believe that's talking about water baptism, listen, let's just connect water baptism to, faith, to the baptism of faith. Because they're, they're really, one is just showing you the other. Praise God. So when we go down in the water, we need to start believing God that we're really coming up a new man. But according to the word of God, you already are a new man if you're in Christ before you ever go into the water. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so now in verse, so, so did you not know? So if you didn't know, now you know. Look at verse 11, Romans chapter 6, verse 11. It says, even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin. 
but alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's what it says in the NASB. In the King James Version, it says, reckon yourself to be dead. So I want you to think about this a little bit. It says to consider yourself to be dead. Look, look, this is where I go from preaching the metal, and I know that. But, like, do, you, do we want to be dead? Sometimes we, and what I mean is dead to sin. <laughs> you know, sometimes, now, I mean, I'm not looking to die right this second, praise God. No, I, do, I don't want to fear death. I believe that if I, when I die, I believe, you know, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Unless the Lord has something different to say. But if I do, I believe God that I'll be like sliding on streets of gold. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't mourn me. Celebrate. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pray it anyway. I don't play on God right now, but praise God. I don't want to die physically until the Lord wants to take me home. But what I'm trying to say is I do want to die to sin. And so when I let me ask the question again, do you want to die to sin? And many times people are saying, yeah, but. with me. I kind of like it. It hurts when I'm trying to pull myself away from me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm the only one that's ever found that thing before. It's right down there. My prayer for your life right now in the name of Jesus is that the Holy Spirit would send his conviction power so hard and so strong in your life that whatever it is that you've been dealing with that you're having a hard time releasing yourself from that the Holy Spirit would begin to do the work. And most of the time it don't sound nothing like I just said and he comes in as gentle as a dove and he just starts kind of stirring some things up. He starts flapping new wings around and he starts stirring. And it's sometimes it's the leastest little thing that you would imagine and then you respond to that. You respond to that prompting of the Holy Spirit. And man, I'll tell you what, look back in two weeks and see where you are compared to whenever that dove come fluttering in your heart. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit will show up and he'll start to deal with our heart. And if we'll just yield to the Spirit of God yeah. to see what God will do. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So consider yourself or reckon yourself to be dead to sin. The thought is that a disciple, which means a learner, has been taught and learned and has come to the conclusion that he's no longer operating according to the old standard. He's no longer the previous creation born of Adam. He's a new creation born of Jesus. Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And so now knowing the truth, it is his responsibility to apply this truth to his life. It's now your responsibility. Everybody by the hearing, not a whole lot of people, but everybody by the hearing of Pastor Matt's voice, and even you watching on the it's now your responsibility. Just like it's my responsibility because we know the truth to apply the truth of God's word to our life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So you can't be a better man. You can't do it like Nancy said and just say no in your own strength. But once you begin to understand, no, I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe what the word of God says. Now, whenever I was buried with Jesus in the tomb, that the Lord was doing a DNA genetically modifying my heart, genetically modifying my spirit. He placed his spirit on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Now the kingdom of God is resident on the inside of me. Now the power of God is on the inside of me. And I don't have to yield to sin anymore. I can yield to the presence of the Holy Spirit. I can yield to the truth of God's word. And I can watch God working and moving in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6 verse 12 says this. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts. Do not let sin be king. Now that you know these things, I mean, this is, Paul is methodically breaking it down. This is the truth. You were this, now you're this, therefore, don't let sin be your king. Amen? Singers, musicians, y'all can come up. Even though sin has entered the natural realm through Adam and had kingship previously in your personal life, sin is no longer king in you. It no longer has its dominion over you. You have been translated into the kingdom of Christ. So quit submitting yourself. Matt, quit, uh, let us quit submitting ourselves to sin's authority. That's right. Amen? Look at verse 13. I'm, I, see, I'm learning. I'm going to call them up quicker so that they have some time to do all their thing. You know, we'll transition, right? Look at this. Verse 13. Do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, 
but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness of God. Now I want you to understand something. That word instruments, it literally in the Greek means weapons of warfare. Yeah, well, that's what it means, to weapons of warfare. Quit submitting your body parts as weapons of warfare to unrighteousness. Start submitting your body parts as weapons of warfare for righteousness. See, when we submit ourselves, our, our body parts to, to unrighteousness, our minds think evil instead of righteousness. Our mouths speak death instead of life. Our feet walk towards sin instead of holiness. Our hands break instead of build. You can even start strumming your guitar a little bit if you want to. Romans 6, 16 says this, Do you not know that when you present yourself to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? And when you willingly submit yourself, you're yielding yourself to the kingdom of darkness, to the power of sin. And you don't have to do that. This is my conclusion. Jesus has given us new life. Through our new birth with Jesus, our old man died with him. Our new man resurrected as a new creation. And while we were in the tomb with Jesus, the Holy Spirit was doing some spiritual surgery on us. He did a very technical spiritual procedure where he turned off a switch that disconnected the power of sin received in our natural birth in Adam. And he intertwined his divine nature into the helix of our spiritual DNA. New birth activates that. Amen? Continued faith keeps it going. If you need your switch flipped, pray with me now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I need for that sin switch to say flip in the off direction. Holy Spirit, I need the divine nature switch to be flipped on in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're watching on video. Maybe you're in this place and you don't know whether you've truly ever received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you would just yield your heart to him and say, Lord, come in right now. I pray. Come into my heart, Lord. Please forgive me. Please forgive me of my sin. Please Forgive me of my rebellion. Maybe you've already been saved before, but you've been living in rebellion. You've been surrendering to the will of evil instead of the will of God. I'm not going to ask you to come up right now. I'm just going to ask you to, to, to let the Lord know that you're recognizing him. And that you're asking him to come into your heart. And you're asking him to start flipping some switches. That he would do a miracle in your heart. If you'll ask him to do that, even listen. Even if that thing that you're connected to, you feel like you don't want to let it go right now. If you feel that strongly about that thing and you know it's against God's word, it will send you to hell. I don't care what you think your theology is, I'm telling you right now. If that thing has a hold on you right now, that is a demonic spirit trying to convince you that you're going to be okay. And you will not be okay if you stay married to sin when you have an opportunity to ask the Holy Spirit to turn that switch off. So right now in your spirit, man, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to please turn that switch off. Set me free, Lord. Set me free from the bondage of this thing. Praise God.